three, two, one. What's going on, everybody? This is the Undefeated by Choice podcast brought to you by Still Fist. We are here today with Jocelyn Kaufman. What's going on? Not too much. Just getting ready to go to the gym tonight. I was just, I was actually, that was one of the first things I was going to ask you is you are putting in a killer amount of training. The, what you posted yesterday was nonstop training. I shadow boxed at my house. I shadow boxed it and then I hit mitts at the gym and then I did this and then I did that. Now I'm going to run for four miles and then I'm going, or 45 minutes and then I'm going to, when do you stop it? Are you, are you worried about overtraining at all? Um, no, I've played competitive sports my whole life, so I'm pretty used to training and putting in a lot of work, um, but anything I do, I make sure that I'm putting forth my full effort, and some days I do take off because I understand my body and that sometimes I need a break, but no, I feel like there's only a short amount of time to do everything I want to do, so... I want to make sure I get to where I want to get. Well, you always say, I've, I've noticed you've, you've put it that you've, you've, uh, donned the tag, um, 1% better every day. Yeah. Do you ever yeah, just, that's my do you ever just hang up the mitts if you feel like, yeah, I'm 1% better right now. And then you just like 10 minutes into it. You're like, Hey, I'm 1% better. And then you, and then you walk out or does he, do you still finish the practice? No, I think where that comes the best into play is, um, when I'll have like a bad fight camp or I'll have a bad practice where I feel like I didn't do le as well as I could and then I'll just sit down and ask myself okay what did I get better at today and you can always pick something out as long as you're going and spending time with this sport you can always pick something that you learned or that you got better at and so I think it's just a mental win every single time I think about what I got better at, even if I had the worst practice of the week. Yeah. You, you, you can even say, well, I got better at pushing through a bad practice. Even yeah. Though. yeah. <laughs> I got a little better at pushing through it, even though I was getting punched every two seconds. No, nah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's always my goal. That's always what I say is oh, I took the beating a little better today. Yeah. <laughs> um, normally, I always uh, the first question I get into is the nickname. Now, I see you have a nickname. Uh, I saw it on the back of a shirt, right? What is it, Josie J or something like that? Yeah, Josie J. Josie J. It's kind of like kind of like a version of my name. Uh -huh. um, I don't really have a nickname. I would say that's it. <laughs> but oh, my coach just started calling me it. Uh, last February and everyone just started calling me it. So, so I'm guessing, I'm guessing Jossie J is a play on Juicy J, which I believe yeah. was a rapper. Yeah, that's what my coach Keith Asbury. Uh, okay, we're gonna call Jossie J like Juicy J. Okay, okay. Well, I like it. See, and and that's and you know sometimes the nickname can be something as simple as that when people try to come up with like i want something that's fierce i want the dragon or i want the tiger or you know it's always like something that and it's like well yeah everybody's gonna choose something tough and we're just gonna keep trying to choose tougher and tougher things sometimes it's just easy simple play on the name uh oh, yeah. and, and 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 from what i can remember juicy j's got some bangers so i mean that's not a bad that's not a bad one to go after so i like it i'm not going to try to give you a new one uh hayden just put me on the spot and tried to have me give him a new one even though i thought his was good enough and so now i got to come up with a new nickname for him so uh, i, I I'm, I'm glad i'm glad that yours is yours fits and yours is good and i don't have to you know put in any extra work for any extra nicknames Oh, good. Yeah, I like it. Stick. <laughs> so August 9th, you're fighting uh, Natalia Spies. Um, and uh, uh, for Still Fist, this is your first fight for Still Fist. What's, what's taking so long? Why are, you, why are we just now having you uh, in our cage? Uh, we've tried, tried a few times. First, at first, it, it was hard to find an opponent. Um, and then... They found me an opponent last November, but then I actually got blood clots in my lungs. Ooh. What was yeah, that? I, do, do you want to, can, can we get into that? What was that all about? How'd that happen? Yeah, so um, my father actually passed away from the same thing. 
and my I have just a strong family history with it my two of my one of my sisters had blood clots and so um I don't we don't really know how I got them the doctor doesn't think it was from MMA but I got them somehow and I went he said that I probably had them in my lungs I had two big blood clots in my lungs for over a month oh while my. I was preparing for this fight oh my gosh <laughs> and I couldn't figure out what was wrong with me like was it back. what would it call like what were the symptoms I my back was so sore I remember one night I got done with fight camp and it almost felt like I had a rib out but it was way worse and I went over to um one of my massage therapist's house just right after practice because I literally couldn't move and she was trying to like fix me but I couldn't lay down or anything and the next day I went to the doctor because I couldn't breathe um and I was like bawling my eyes out. It was probably the most painful thing I've ever experienced. And I went to the doctor and they're like, oh, you do MMA, it's probably just your muscles um, spazzing out. And because my muscles were actually spasming, like nonstop. Uh -huh. Then uh, they gave me muscle relaxers and uh, I definitely used probably too many of those <laughs> you're not supposed <laughs> to admit that <laughs> did not work and i called in sick to work the next day i'm a teacher and i remember in the morning it's like 6 a.m in the morning and i called in sick and i'm in so much pain i'm like trying to write a lesson plan literally in tears um three days later the pain went away i kept going to the doctor i tried to get a cortisone shot in my back and then about a month later i went back and because i was like this isn't right something's yeah. wrong with my lungs like i was doing everything right i got my master's degree in exercise science so i have a good understanding of the body and yeah water. pretty educated and um I'm like nothing's working and he's like well i think you need to go to physical therapy <laughs> i was like oh no i don't like <laughs> It is not my muscles. Yeah. I told them about my family history and the doctor pretty much was like, you know, I don't think it's anything, but we can give you an x-ray. Then he gave me an x-ray and he's like, well, you have pneumonia in both your lungs. So I was like, cool, this makes sense. You know, yeah. I have pneumonia. And then he gave me antibiotics and then I started coughing up blood. <laughs> and oh my I gosh. Still, like, I still didn't really worry too much about it. Yeah. Um, Still was training, and I was supposed to have a fight for Still Fist in three weeks. Wait, wait, time out, time out, time out. You started coughing up blood, and you still weren't too worried about it? <laughs> well, I was like, this, this has to be normal. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, what did you get your degree in again? I know. I know. <laughs> Come on. But You're too no, tough for your own good. Antibiotics. The antibiotics, they made me feel better. Okay. Right? And that's the thing. Like, my back was hurting. Okay. And I legitimately felt better and so it was wednesday night and um i'm hitting pads with my coach at the gym and i'm going hard um but after i got like three minutes in to a pad workout i would have to take a break because i couldn't catch my breath and then um and then the next day I was like, okay, this isn't right. My sister's a nurse. So I sent her a picture and I was like, will you ask like one of the doctors if this is something that I should go into the ER for? And she asked and he's like, you need to go to the ER right away. And um, it was my first period of the day. Like I said, I'm a teacher. Yeah. And I only had two more classes left. So I just finished, finished the day strong. And I was teaching my students about not doing drugs. And I told them, I was like, guys i might be dying and if i die my dying wish is for you not to do drugs so <laughs> it's kind of funny because i mean i honestly didn't think i was dying and i was just making a joke yeah but yeah i feel like if something did happen they would have been scarred for life and i would have made an impact on about 200 kids. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and went into the ER and even those doctors were like there's no way you have uh, blood clots like you know you're so young you're active there's no way but just to be safe we're going to do a CAT scan and lo, and lo and behold I had uh, bilateral pulmonary embolisms and 
um, they were just in shock because my heart rate was still at like 55 and my oxygen was at 99 and the doctor pretty much said because of the shape I'm in yeah. it saved my life yeah um, and then I was like so can I like get off the blood thinners for this fight in three weeks and <laughs> He was like, nope, you're never going to fight again. And I was bawling my eyes out. I cry a lot, apparently. But <laughs> it's okay. my eyes out like, oh my gosh, my life is over. And then, um, yeah, all the doctors said that for like a week and I didn't really listen to any of them. And I was like, I'm still going to fight. And then I went and seen a specialist and he is working with me where I can um, still fight. So so is it yeah. uh, so you so the, i mean is that the uh is it a pretty quick fix once they they diagnose it is it just uh, uh, the, uh like a case where they put you on blood thinners and it and it will thin out the clots or or is there is there more to it than that well that's what was weird is everyone was freaking out like oh my gosh this is so dangerous and then they gave me the blood thinners and they're like well see ya you know <laughs> <laughs> so i mean if you were like on a steady dose of like ibuprofen or something or baby aspirin or something would that be is that or is that not good enough um so in order to like get rid of the blood clots i had to go on this blood thinner medication uh -huh. and it was originally supposed to be for six months but the specialist only had me be on it for three months um and while taking those like i couldn't do it i couldn't do much when it comes to mma because if you get hit you could bleed out essentially uh -huh. and so i just did a ton of head movement a ton of shadow boxing um a lot of drilling and jujitsu and i think that's where i improved so much in like my stand-up is because of all the technical stuff i did and uh -huh. i couldn't spur or anything obviously yeah but um so I'm off them, um, off the blood thinners, obviously, because I want to be able to fight. Yeah. Um, but I'm taking, I take a daily aspirin, like a baby aspirin. Uh -huh. um, and it's not like as successful as the blood thinners, but it does help. Okay. Then like two days before my fight, I will stop taking it. Uh -huh. And then I just have to go in monthly and get my blood checked to make sure it's not clotting or anything. Okay. Wow that was intense <laughs> you, <Yeah. laughs> okay promise me this if you ever are coughing up blood again you're not gonna just go oh yeah this is normal you're gonna go get it checked promise me that right now oh yeah i, I, <laughs> I really learned my lesson okay oh man i mean i, I you know I, I suffered from back uh injury most of my life so i know what it's like to just be like you know i'm just gonna power through this i'm just gonna tough through it you know I, i'm too I'm, you're, we're too tough for our own good but now yeah. now that i know you know um you know what works and what doesn't work i don't i definitely do not uh put up with any crap anymore like i, I know what you're talking about with the doctors being like oh yeah just uh go get physical therapy and just like i'll go into a doctor's office now and i'll be like no this is what we're gonna do i don't you're not gonna tell me anything else you're not gonna give me anything else this is what we're doing or else i'll leave and i'll find another doctor that will give you what i'm telling yeah. like you know if, it, it's uh it's pretty silly that the the hoops that we have to jump through i mean my mom my mom's going through the same thing right now she's got a bad back and i told her go into the doctor tell him to give you this to do this and he's like no we're gonna do this and this and this first and of course my mom's like okay let's listen to the doctor and I'm like, no, listen to me. <laughs> I, I, I went through this for 13 years. You don't have to. You, no one has to go through this. So uh, that's why I wanted you to kind of tell your story uh, because anybody who's listening, you know, that may be going through the same thing, go get yourself checked. Uh, it's, you know, and, and don't, you know, don't jump through all the hoops. If you know, if you really think something might be up, make sure you, you speak, uh, speak up. So that's why I really wanted you to kind of tell your story about, uh, you know, the whole thing and how it all went down and what you were going through. So thank you for that. Um, and so you didn't have any problems with that when you were and you, you, you come from the softball world, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh Wait, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Um, d does softball, are there any aspects of softball that transfer over into MMA? Cause I came from the football background and there's, I felt like a double leg takedown was a tackle. And so I came right into it, being able to wrestle, you know, being able to do that, uh, type of, you know, just closing the distance very quickly. Um, was there anything from softball that you felt, Oh, this is, this is familiar. 
or was it oh, all yeah. I mean, there's a there's a lot like um obviously punching with your right hand is very similar to uh throwing a right handed punch uh-huh. especially for hand right actually looks is very similar to a softball throw uh-huh so after all my fights i actually do like a softball throw <laughs> <laughs> I definitely do that. Uh, and then, and uppercuts, like a pitch. Yeah, yeah. And then swinging is like ro- you're rotating using your core. Uh huh. And so, literally every motion that has to do with rotating, whether it's um, judo throws or hooks, any kicks, I feel like uh, I've picked up pretty well just because I already have that core strength. Uh huh. So, I also, I think the biggest thing is just being an athlete and understanding the body and um, being coachable is a huge aspect. I think it was like every single coach I ever had would say that I was one of the more coachable players they had. And I think in this sport, there's so much to learn from every single person Yeah, that being coachable is a definite advantage. And yeah. so I think that's the biggest thing is just being willing to learn from whoever and understanding what they're telling me and then applying it instead of just nodding my head and pretending like I know what they're telling me. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I, anytime I talk to someone who it comes from another sport and, 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 you know, uh, you know, further than just the rec or, or junior high level, um, that's always the thing is the coaching, the coaching is just being able to be coachable and, and, and learning that. But I never even thought about that. I did think about the overhand, right. And throwing, uh, but I didn't think about the core strength, even just off of, off the swing and, and how much, you know, you're going to, how much extra you're going to put onto your punches because you know how to use your core um yeah. you know and and even judo like you said judo throws so that's actually pretty interesting because i was trying to think about it. I'm like what could translate from softball what could they get what but i don't know that makes a lot of sense uh i got one more one more softball question for you because i uh i grew up working for uh, Roy City Rec. Shout out to the greatest city, uh, city rec in the world. And uh, um, so I grew up watching a lot of softball games, being around a lot of softball players. And uh, what is the deal with, <laughs> with like, the uh, standing on a, on a base and, like, the lean, like, they lean back and then they try to get momentum to run forward? And that's the only like baseball players don't do that. Why does why does like every softball player do that? Well, do you know what I'm talking about? Do you know what I'm referring to? Yeah. Okay. So baseball, they're able to take a short lead before the pitch is thrown. In softball, you have to wait until the pitch is thrown. To oh, go. I didn't know that. Yeah. I am actually a high school softball coach. I'm the head coach at West Jordan High School. Okay. And I don't have my girls do that because I don't think I don't think it's the best. Yeah. I actually have to start in a three point stance like we're sprinting. Yeah. Track. Yeah. So yeah, that way that why. makes way more sense to use like the pad as like like the if you're like yeah. the push off like on a track like on a um what what are the blocks? Like use the base mm-hmm. as a block to, yeah, yeah that so makes way more sense. And we look so different than every other team, but I think, uh, anatomically speaking, it's the, makes the most sense. Yeah. And then it also works because we stole a lot of bases. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. I love when people can figure something out. Cause I always watched that and was like, what the hell are they doing? Like, and I'd always ask like the girls that, you know, I knew that you know, we were playing softball and they, they didn't really have an explanation of why they were doing it. It was like, well, it's what we're coached to do. And a lot of them be like, Oh, it makes you move faster. And I'm like, no, let's, let's go out there right now. I'll jump, I'll get off the base. You get off the base. And I promise I get off faster than you do. And yeah. they're like, no, it makes you run faster. And I'm like, it doesn't, that's not how it works. And so I really wanted an explanation. So I'm glad I ran into you so you could explain that to me. Anybody who hasn't seen it, please go watch the softball game. Not one of Josie's cause her team's not going to do it or Jossie, uh, cause her team's not going to do it. But, uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's great. Anyways, let's get back to MMA. Let's get back to this fight. How's your fight camp coming? Where do you train? Who are your coaches? Who are your main training partners? How's everything? going with that uh so i train at Twilla martial arts academy out here in Twilla. um 
the head coach is Keith Asbury, and then have Brandon McMullen, and then Daniel Good is also one of my coaches. He used to fight in Utah quite a bit. And then um, Gustavo Rodriguez is uh, my jiu-jitsu instructor. Really, really smart guy. Um, and then I have a bunch of training partners that always come out, but the main ones are Boomer, uh, Andrew, I have a hard time saying his last name, but he is fighting on August 9th too. And then uh, a teammate, a female teammate, Casey, she hasn't had a fight yet. And then I have Zach Cavender, except he's not really a training partner because he's massive. <laughs> <laughs> he's a giant, he's a giant killer is what yeah. he is. Yes, he is big. I was, uh, yesterday I did jiu-jitsu against him and I was like, this is pointless. <laughs> Well, he's got those long limbs. You just uh, just oh, choose yeah. one. Oh, you just you choose. Like you just go. choose one and, and just stick onto that and don't let go. But <laughs> no, he's he's. <laughs> I love my team. I think I love coming from a smaller gym because uh -huh. I feel like we get so much more individual attention than other mm -hmm. gyms get. But then we also help each other. Yeah. And we always learn from each other. Yeah. And so that helps out a lot when you come from a smaller gym like that and you have a fight camp does the whole gym i mean is it i mean you have two fighters fighting on this upcoming card so is the whole gym just like mindset get you two ready for for your upcoming fights or is it still kind of just like you guys are kind of setting up your camp or how does that work so we pr we pretty much have fight camp every night at eight and a couple nights a week we do conditioning and then on the other nights uh our teammates from like jujitsu and Muay Thai classes, they'll come in even if they aren't interested in MMA to help us get ready. Nice. Uh, we also get like high school wrestlers that come in <laughs> for our ground and pound days. <sighs> so um, it's it's really cool because everyone is helping us get to the next level, mm -hmm. and they don't expect anything. Yeah. Uh, which is amazing. And have I seen you been doing a little uh, traveling out out at a few other gyms too to get looks with other females? Am I am I right on that? Um, I mean, yeah. So I went and visited my grandma because she was having a hard time uh, in Arizona. So I went to the MMA lab and trained there uh -huh. for just a day actually. And John okay. Crouch invited me to go train with the pro team. <laughs> so I spotted <laughs> a bunch of pros from the MMA lab, which was fun. Yeah, and then. Um, I went and sparred with Caitlin Neal a couple times and I went, I had a teacher training in St. George, so I went there for a week. So I'm not going and looking, but if I'm traveling, I might as well go yeah. get some different looks. Yeah. And I think it's also good to be able to judge where I'm at in my training yeah. compared to other things. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I, I do. I, I like I like the traveling. I was just out in Vegas uh, a couple weeks ago and went out to uh, Extreme Couture, and it was an eye-opening experience to say the least. Mm -hmm. uh, it was. It was. Uh, I don't want to get too much into it because it's. Uh, this is your time, but it was. I, I I think that traveling around is very important for MMA fighters. Uh, getting looks and experiences from other people, but as I've always said, like you need your home base, you need your home people who know who you are, who take care of you and care about you. So sounds like you got that out there in Tooele. Um, where is Tooele? Where is Tooele exactly? I don't even know where it is. I think I've been out there before, but you know, I've grown up in Utah my whole life, and I think I've been to Tooele once. <laughs> That's most people. <laughs> but Twila is like 30 miles west of Salt Lake City. Is it close? Is it where the Rocky Mountain Raceway is? Yes, that is in Twila. Okay, so that's the one time in high school I went out to Twila and then drove, I've driven past it a number of times going out to Wendover. Yeah. Okay, all right. And so you're... Um, so you're all the way out there. How's um how is the weight cut coming? That's always uh and that's always a question everybody wants to know. How how's the weight cut coming along? Yeah, so I haven't had a fight in a while, so <laughs> I got a little heavy. <laughs> um, but it's coming good. I really tightened up my diet the last couple weeks and so it, I should make it no problem. Yeah. It's 
that's what I told my coach is I was like, I can train all day, every day, and I love it, but if my friends want to go get pizza and ice cream, I want to go get pizza and ice cream, you know? <laughs> you, you deserve it. And he pretty much told me it's a good thing you train or else you would be 300 pounds. And I said, I know. I, I was I was just thinking about that as I left the grocery store yesterday. I thought to myself, I wonder if I just ate whatever I wanted, but then just continued to train as I train right now. What my body would do, how healthy I would be, like what what exactly would happen. Because if I ate the way I wanted to eat, it would be pizza and ice cream all the time. It would be, it would be insane amounts of it. Cause I used to be very heavy and I, I know how to put away some food. I know how to, uh, I know how to murder a buffet. I really do. So, uh, but no, I'm glad you're getting everything, uh, put together and you're not stressing too much about the weight cut. Cause that's always, you never want a fighter to be worried about that. That's, that's, sh you know, unfortunately that's a big part of the game, but that's, sh you know, that's needs to be the last thing that someone needs to worry about is, am I going to make weight or not you're about to step in there and have someone throwing punches at you the last thing you need to worry about is you know what you look like on the scale oh yeah yeah i love it though i think it's cool like a whole different aspect of the game i don't i don't really agree with them trying to take it away i i, I see that it's not always safe but i think it's part of the game like part of part of the challenge yeah, I think there's a there's a sweet spot because you have a lot of fighters that are still making weight cuts, but they're fighting at higher weight classes. So you have someone like Michael Chiesa. He used to go down to 155 and now fights at 170. Looks a million times better, fights better, you know, not, you know, killing himself to get down to 155. But he's still making weight cut. He walks around heavier than 170. So um, I think... You know, doing away with it is never something that's going to happen. Everyone's always going to cut weight. You always feel like you have an advantage, and and you do. I mean, if you're in better shape, you're going to fight better. And so, um, I think there's a sweet spot of not cutting too much weight. But I think you're always going to have you're always going to have fighters cutting weight. And it's just it's the way it is. It's just the way it is. So, um, yeah, I yeah, I don't think I have to worry about. You know. There will be more regulations, I think, put on it and like water testing and stuff like that. But, you know, that this, there is a danger to dehydrated brains and there is a danger to, you know, malnourishment and there is danger to a lot of stuff. But, um, but, you know, I think fighting closer, a little closer to your weight is is more realistic of where where we're headed right now. Oh, I agree with that. So, uh, and, and, you know, and I do, I, and I'm kind of the same as you, uh, where I kind of liked it. I kind of liked the weight cut because coming from another sport where I didn't have to worry about it, I was an offensive lineman. They wanted me to eat more. They wanted me to, you know, they want, they were like, you know, get as fat as you can. And so, you know, when I came into MMA and there, and they first told me, you know, they basically, Pat basically told me you're going to cut 30 pounds for your first fight. I was like, you're insane. You're no way. Am I going to cut 30 pounds for my first first fight and uh i did and it was just and for me it really i was already eating healthy it was just a matter of the training that i was putting in, putting in and so it wasn't a real big thing i just was uh you know i was putting in a full day of 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 you know training whether it be sparring or or you know mitt work or whatever or drills and then going to the gym after and the weight and the 30 pounds just really came off pretty easily so um but i was excited about it kind of like you were saying like it's something new it's when you come from another sport and you get to try this new thing uh it's it's kind of exciting you kind of like it so I think you got the yeah. right, I think you got the right mindset with it. Um, so August 9th, Natalia Spies, what do you know about her? Uh, what are you expecting um, in this fight? Like, uh, what, have you done any any uh, homework on her? What What are you expecting? Yeah. So any any time I fight someone, I definitely watch their previous fights if I can. Uh -huh. um, it's because I'm really realistic with my abilities and I want my coach to be the same uh -huh. because I do care about my brain and I don't want to go in like to a fight and that I'm not ready for. I think eventually I'll be ready for any fight. But so I definitely watched her previous fights. She is the toughest opponent I've had and I'm really excited about that. Um, 
to to like have a like a genuine ch- challenge um but i do think that i'm better than her in every aspect okay in my opinion uh, so i think it'll be interesting to see where the fight even goes <laughs> um if it stays on the feet if it stays on the ground so i'm excited about it just because i know that she is a good opponent she trains at a good gym and i think we're gonna put on like the fight of the night for sure i always i always will put my money on the female fighters i'll always put all my money on the female fighters for fight of the night i don't it's yeah. it's females are just crazy that's what <laughs> i went to the fights last last uh, like two weeks ago oh, yeah. and there were two chicks i think they were both oh no but holy cow <laughs> yeah their debut they did their debut they went at it yeah yeah i mean you know i i at the same time it was like you know females are just crazy and that's why in seventh grade all the boys cornered the girls to fight because they put on the better fights you know <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it to you to say that I'm not gonna say that the the females are crazy I'm gonna leave that I'm gonna let you say that but what I will say all, all my all the other ones are what I will say is this um, I feel like you know a lot of the female fighters still feel like they have something to prove even though they've absolutely proven themselves in the sport um, but I feel like they you still all kind of have a chip on your shoulder and it causes you to go out and and put everything out there because you still feel like you're trying to prove something and it causes you to have better fights like you go out there saying in my mind it's like you know we have to we have to be better than the boys basically because for so long it was just a boys club and it was it was just you know it seemed like it was just for the guys and and uh and now you, you know so you all kind of go in there with a chip on your shoulder and it shows because month after month after card after card after show after show the women out outshine the men every time i in my opinion well and i think it's the only sport i was talking about this today it's the only female sport that i think has the potential to be to have as many views as male sports yes oh you are you are dead on you you're i mean i've been saying that i was just uh you know with the whole the whole women's soccer uh you know uh movement that was going on you know they get the women paid as much as the men i really wanted to be like well why don't they all go to mma because all those women are getting paid the same as the men and they're getting main event spots and they're getting you know the the same promotion the you know the same push the same everything like and 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 that's why i really want to push uh women's mma especially here in utah is because mma is the only sport that i feel is is it's the most progressive sport as far as putting male and female on the same page oh yeah for sure and and that's why i know that's that's why i love the sport so much because i really do I mean, I was going to get in this conversation the other day, um, you know, the, the conversation of who's, who's the best in the world, who's the, who's the greatest of all time. And it's pretty much come down to John Jones or Amanda Nunes. In my mind, it's Amanda Nunes. And you oh, know, yeah. to say that the greatest, the greatest combat athlete of all times is a female. Oh, yeah. It is, yeah. is, I mean, I, the way that she's put down all these other females that were, you know, leaps and you know bounds above everybody else i mean ronda rousey was so far above everybody else for so long uh chris cyborg was so far above everybody for so long and then amanda just goes in and smokes them both and you know just what she's been able to do in different weight classes it's yeah uh, it's yeah. in my mind it goes to her john's skill is 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 amazing but he's done it in one weight class and yeah. I don't know. Get, keep getting popped for stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's had a little bit of help. He's had a little bit of help. So uh, I do I do love John Jones, but yeah, in my, in my opinion, okay. it is. So yeah, uh, to, to take it back to what you said, I would not doubt that you and Natalia put on the fight of the night. Uh, I know there's another there's another female uh, fight on the card that is gonna um, that is gonna challenge you guys. That's gonna you know uh, put their name in the hat for fight of the night. So uh, yeah. let's see it. Let's see it. Bring it out. Let's. I wanna. <laughs> I'm excited to see it. Um, so this is your as you said this is your first fight for still fist um how i mean 
uh, but you've been to uh, quite a few still fish shows. What do you, what do you like about still fish? What are you excited about? What do you think is going to be different than uh, other organizations you fought for? Um, we always like to hear the input from the fighters. Yeah, I, I really like the venue, the union rail event center. I think that venue is awesome. Um, I don't know. I think it's going to be very sim similar, but I do think it's one of the bigger shows in Utah. So I'm definitely excited to get my name out there. Uh -huh. And then also just to fight in that venue. Cause I think it's one of the better venues in Utah as well for MMA. So yeah, that's what I'm most excited about, but I don't, I don't know. I th honestly, I think everything, um, it's very similar for all i've fought in three different organizations and they've all been very similar so this uh, is the first one to put you on a podcast right yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's cool there you go <laughs> yeah no no yeah no and it, come, it comes down to it the cage is the same size uh you know it's it's yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a fight. It's a fight, and that's what you need to focus on. Is not is not the is not the venue. But hopefully, you know, you have a great experience with us, and uh, and you know, we can get you back time and time again. Because uh, I know we, uh, you know, are are looking forward to this fight, and we want to see we want to see you go out there and put on a show. So, um, you know, I know, and, and, and having met you before and having known you before, I'm pretty sure that you're going to be one of those fighters that, uh, that we're going to be trying to get back time and time again. So, um, last thing that we do is we do a little trash talking segment. Have you watched this podcast before? No. <laughs> okay. I'm not offended at all. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> so what I do is, um, because I think trash talk is pretty ridiculous, uh, for the most part, especially in these organizations, cause you don't even really know the person most of the time that you're fighting. So you don't really have really anything bad to say about them. And then sometimes, you know, you get in the pros and their trash talk is just so scripted and terrible. And, you know, you have the king of cringe, Henry Cejudo who just his trash talk makes me sick to my stomach so what I do is I try to poke fun at trash talking and I looked up online uh, this insult generator and so what it does is it generates an insult for you so what you would say it comes up with four words and so what you would say is I'm going to beat Natalia Spies on August 9th because she's a uh, and then you say the four words and then that's that. So are you prepared to do a little trash talk? So I come up with my own four words? Nope. I will generate them. It's an insult generator. I press a button and it comes up, puts four words together for you. Okay. Okay. You're prepared okay. for it? Three, two, one, go. I'm going to win on August 9th because my opponent is a nut milking twister. <laughs> 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 okay i'm not going to correct you because i know your phone's about to die hurry and thank your sponsors before your phone dies uh and let you know let them let them know that you love them and you're thankful for them <laughs> yeah so first of all i'd like to thank tula martial arts academy gustavo rodriguez uh jiu-jitsu mm -hmm. big shout out to the combo hitter um i'm gonna get a knockout because of that thing and then shout out to girl clothing battle fight gear jenny uh the booty realtor and uh, Elevation Massage for helping me out. Is that it? Girl clothing. And girl clothing, okay. And thanks to Bad Athletics for sending me some supplements. All right, perfect, thank you. Jocelyn, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I'm gonna let you hang up before your phone dies. Uh, thanks for coming on and good luck August 9th. Awesome, thank you. Okay. All right, everybody. Uh, that was Justin Kaufman uh, coming out August 9th. First time on Still Fist, but not first time fighting. She's coming out looking for that knockout. Um, if you like this episode, please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, you can find us, uh, or if you are a fan of hers you can find her and buy tickets from her if you don't know who she is but you still want to watch her fight go to stillfistfight.com get your tickets uh you can find this podcast on itunes iHeartRadio, and youtube you can find uh still fist on um still fist fight and you can find us uh, you can find us on instagram still fist fight you can find us on facebook at still fist fight night everybody be good to yourself be good to each other i love you